Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to solve proportion problems. This is where we get to cross multiply. But before we get started, we gotta get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready to solve proportion problems? <laughs> All right, let's get started right there. Proportion problems. Well, what is a proportion? Proportion is an equation of two ratios. For example, if we have the ratio of x to 6 equal to the ratio of 2 to 3, we have this equation here. This is called a proportion problem. We can cross multiply to solve proportion problems. Remember, this is not a proportion problem. This is a ratio equal to the sum of two ratios. And if you remember, we previously solved this type of problem by multiplying both sides of the equation with the LCD and kung fu the fraction. Just to remind you how that was done, we use the LCD, which is 12, multiply both sides and distribute, so every term gets multiplied by 12, and we busted out our kung fu. 12 divided by 6 is 2, 2 times x is 2x. 12 divided by 3 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. 12 divided by 4 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, that's some good kung fu there. Solving for x, we get 17 over 2, that's our final answer. Now let's solve some proportion problems by cross multiplying. Here we have a proportion, x over 6 equals 2 over 3, and we cross multiply. We go this way, we get 3 times x, we go the other way, 6 times 2, which is 12. Now to solve for x, we divide both sides by 3, that gives us 1x equals 4, and that's our answer to this proportion problem. Let's do another one here. x over 6 equals 2 thirds. This is the same problem, but we're going to do it using the LCD. This technique always works on proportions. Watch. We have x over 6 equals 2 over 3. Our lowest common denominator for both these fractions is 6. So if you multiply both sides by 6, and kung fu, look what happens. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 1 times x is x. On the right-hand side, 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And there's your answer. x equals 4. It was the same as cross-multiplying, right? Sometimes clearing the fractions is easier than cross-multiplying. But sometimes cross-multiplying is easier than clearing fractions. So we're going to stick to cross-multiplying for this video. All right, Charlie, let's go to this one. x over 4 equals 5 over 6. OK, Charlie, let's cross-multiply. What's 6 times x? 6x. And what's 4 times 5? 20. Very nice there, Charlie. Now let's divide both sides by 6. And we get 1x equals 20 over 6 that fraction reduces to 10 thirds, and that's our final answer. Let's do another one. Here we have x over 6 equals 2 over 3 fourths. Now we have a complex fraction on the right-hand side, so it will be easier to cross-multiply. As you're going to see in this problem, sometimes you have to cross-multiply more than once. If we cross-multiply this way, we get 3 fourths times x. Cross-multiply the other way, 6 times 2, that's 12. But let's write the 12 as a fraction. Put it as 12 over 1. Now the left hand side, we have 3 fourths times x. If we write the x as a fraction, x over 1, and multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we get 3x over 4 on the left hand side. The right hand side is still 12 over 1. So now we can cross multiply again. 1 times 3x is 3x. 4 times 12 is 48. Now we divide both sides by 3 to get our answer. 1x equals 16, and that is our answer. Let's do another one. Now here we throw in a decimal. 2x over 5 equals 0 0.3 over 4, or 3 tenths over 4, right? On the right-hand side, we are going to clear that decimal by multiplying numerator and denominator by 10. Remember, that's like clearing fractions. So left-hand side, we have 2x over 5. The right-hand side, we have 3 tenths over 4. And we multiply numerator and denominator by 10. And that gives us 3 over 40 on the right-hand side of the equation. The decimal's gone. So we can cross-multiply now. 40 times 2x is 80x. 5 times 3 is 15. And now to solve for x, we divide both sides by 80. And we get 15 over 80. Now, Charlie, can 15 over 80 be reduced? Yes. What's the common factor? Five. 
very nice there, Charlie. So let's divide out the common factor of five and we get a final answer of three sixteenths. Oh, what fun. Let's do another one. Here we have 1.2x divided by 0.7 and that's equal to 0.04 divided by 0.3. We have an equation of two ratios, right? Basically a fraction equal to a fraction. Therefore, we can cross multiply. But before we do that, we are going to clear those decimals. Now, on the left-hand side, we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by 10 because remember, multiplying a decimal by 10 moves the decimal place one place to the right. On the right-hand side, notice in the numerator, we have 0 0.04, four hundredths. So we're going to take four hundredths and multiply by 100, and that will turn it into the whole number four. It moves the decimal place two places to the right. But if we multiply the top by 100, we must multiply the bottom by 100. So that three-tenths, when you multiply it by 100, you have to move the decimal place two values to the right. Let's do the left-hand side first. 1.2 times 10 is 12, and it's 12x. 0.7 times 10 is 7, and so that gives you 7 in the denominator there. The right-hand side, 4 hundredths times 100 is 4. You move the decimal two places to the right. Now, 3 tenths times 100. Move the decimal two places to the right. You need a placeholder, and that's 30. So we cleared decimals. Now we can cross-multiply. Charlie, what's 30 times 12? 360. Very nice, and it's 360x. 7 times 4 is 28. And now, to solve for x, we divide both sides by 360, and we get x equals 28 over 360. But 28 and 360 have a common factor of 4, so let's divide that out. And we get 7 over 90, and that is our final answer for that one there. That's enough with solving proportion problems. For now, let's take a break, and we'll see you again soon.